hello guys this is the continuation of the first video um in the first video we spoke about the activities that we have and they were production consumption and exchange i only explained production and consumption because i ran out of time you know with the recording and this is the third activity it would be exchange when i'm talking about exchange it includes both um at activities both production and consumption together okay they're happening at the same time now when i'm talking about both production and consumption another term for it would also be trade so here you guys what are we doing the consumers and producers both of them are meeting with each other so the consumers are buying and the producers are selling their goods and services okay now when i'm talking about exchange we're talking about using money okay so um, buying and selling now in the second slide we will be talking about uh, the products and they are split into four main categories the first category would be consumer durable goods consumer durable goods goods as we know we explained it before we said they are tangible so we can see or touch their they have physical properties the durable the word durable it means they are long lasting so for example i would be talking about cars and clothes cars and clothes i can use them more than once okay that's why we call them um, durable goods Consumer non-durable goods is the second category. It non-durable. It means they do not last for a long time. So not long lasting. For example, food. Once I eat the food, that's it. I can only use it once. A fuel for the car. Fuel for the car is also non-durable. So we only use it once. Whereas the car is a durable good uh, consumer services so uh, when I'm talking about consumer uh, services not all of our wants can be satisfied with physical products we also want firms to provide us with services for example we may want the services of doctors bankers insurance agents uh, window cleaners teachers these they all provide consumer services you pay for these services you pay for your education you pay for doing your nails in a salon or cutting your hair okay so as we explained before we explained the difference between goods and services as we said this is tangible and this is intangible now the fourth one would be uh, capital goods capital goods i can give examples um screwdrivers drills um, uh, trucks um, or lorries tractors um, power stations factory buildings these are considered capital goods so the, the purchase of capital goods is known as an investment usually firms buy these capital goods in order to produce goods and services and in order to sell them okay now this is the most important thing i will be talking about and explaining factors of production as we said before we just gave a little um, explanation about it we said factors of production another name for it would be inputs or also it is known as resources okay guys now during the explanation i will always denote factors of production as something called fops okay now we have four factors of production in order to produce any good or service i need all of these four resources or inputs the first factor of production is land land is considered a natural resource so it is already there it includes all natural resources so for example minerals such as coal and oil um, animals for their meat and their skin uh, plants uh, the fertile soil okay 
um, uh, uh, trees, all of these um, are considered to be natural resources. I need them in order to produce goods and services. The second one that I would be explaining would be capital. Capital, it means it is all the man-made or manufactured resources. So they are not found naturally. People make them in order to produce goods and services. Capital is uh, capital goods. When I'm talking about capital, I'm talking about all machines or equipment used in production and also buildings. Okay, the building, the premises itself. These I consider it as capital. The third one, it would be labor. Labor, for instance, I'm talking about all workers, no matter what their occupation. Okay, so I will include teachers, I will include farmers, any occupation you might think of. Uh, drivers, janitors, um, doctors, nurses, uh, anything, any occupation. Okay, any person that works in order to receive an income, which might be in a form of a salary or a wage, we will consider him as a worker. And finally, the fourth one would be enterprise. Enterprise, it is, as we said before, before it is considered to be the firm, the firm itself, the business itself. Now, the people that run the enterprise, we call them entrepreneurs. They are the people that started the business. So we consider them as risk takers. Why are they risk takers? Because they risked all their money in the business and they didn't know for sure if the business would lead to profits or losses. So it was a risk that they took. Okay, they are the ones, so I can call them risk takers or I can call them decision makers. They are the ones that decide what, how, and for whom to produce. What should the price of the product be? Where shall, I, where shall they open the business? And so on. So as you can see, if we go back to the previous slide that I explained in the first video, um, this one, we combine all of the resources, all of the factors of production in order to produce the final goods and services. So if I want to define factors of production or I want to define FOPs, inputs or resources, it means the scarce resources we use up in the production of goods and services to satisfy human needs and wants. Okay, now this is another um, explanation for the factors of production. And as we said, we can call them inputs. So factors of production um, are the inputs available to supply goods and services in an economy. And we have four categories, as we explained. So this is like a, a summary. Land is considered to be a natural resource. And you should be capable of giving example, you, examples, you guys. And then I have the labor. Uh, the labor, it means I'm talking about the workers. And we have the enterprise who runs the firm. Enterprise is the firm who runs it. We call them entrepreneurs. And they are the ones responsible for organizing the factors of production. And as we said, they are considered to be the risk takers. And finally, the last factor of production would be uh, capital. Capital, as we said, all the machines and buildings that you might be thinking of. Okay? Um, these are images uh, illustrating the factors of production. Land, labor, these are the workers. Capital, it means I might be talking about the machine, so it's technology. And enterprise, it is the firm, okay? And here, as you can see, it is the business itself, and you have people working in the firm. And um, the, the, this is another example. 
this is the tractor the tractor it is the machine so it is considered capital the driver or the farmer he is the worker so we consider him as labor the idea so is he working for what farm what is the name of the farm he's working for let's say the farm's name is abc abc is the enterprise and the land the land that he is plowing okay this is a natural resource he's planting these are some examples okay um i would like you to classify these examples these seven examples that you have here into what type of factor of production are they okay and let's say we're talking about um an unemployed factory worker um i'll i'll send it to you on a modo and you will um, try and take a guess <clears throat> Um, you should know the answers and then I will <clears throat> give you the answers. Here are the answers. Okay, now, as we said in the objective, um, it was uh, said in the previous slide, we need to define what are factor rewards. This factor, it refers to the term factors of production. Okay, uh, rewards, and what do I get in return? okay factor rewards payments different factors of production require and receive in order to participate in a productive activity so in order to produce the goods and service i am talking about um, what should we pay in return as we said we have factors of production land labor capital enterprise okay guys for the rent, it could be I am renting the land. So I am paying rent for the owner of the land. Okay? Owners of land require the payment of rent to supply these resources to the firms or to the enterprise. Okay? Uh, for example, let's say um, I have a piece of land and I am um, um, giving it to a farmer in order to plant it and sell the produce at the end this farmer he has to pay me rent for the land okay so it could be on a monthly or on a yearly basis wages who gets the wage the labor i wouldn't be working for free i would require at the end of the month a salary or a wage so it is for laborers okay laborers they get wage in order to give their skills or their human effort to the firms then i have interest interest guys this is on page 13 in your book interest investments in capital goods such as factory buildings and machinery so we're interest it, it is a form it is a factor reward for capital because we're talking about machines and we're talking about uh, buildings um, the money invested or employed in capital goods by firms is therefore also called capital the interest is paid to people and organizations that supply or invest capital in firms okay profit who gets the profit I, as a worker, would never receive profit. I will only receive a salary or a wage. Profit, it goes to the business owners, which we call entrepreneurs. So who is getting a profit at the end of the day? It is the firm or the entrepreneur. Um, this is another illustration as a summary for factors of production and factor rewards. Um, these are the four factors of production that we explained labor land capital and entrepreneurship um, if i want to classify them into resources or a, a, what are they the labor i would call him a human a resource the land it's a natural resource capital they are man-made resources and entrepreneurship it is the organization of the factors of production they do the decisions okay and these are the examples we already gave um that i will send you on edmodo also a video as a summary 
Thank you.